They say what you see is what you get There's more to life than meets the eye They don't believe it, they don't understand I've touched your hands, I felt your side Close enough to whisper, to hear my cry Not invisible, no You are close enough to whisper To hear my cry In the light of morning In the dead of night yeah, yeah. Close enough to whisper To hear my cry All right, well, good morning.
Get out your iPhone, your iPad, Droid, Galaxy, whatever it is you have these days, and let's go to Matthew chapter 20. Uh, this is a story for a believing believer. It really happened. And uh, it's starting in verse 29, Matthew chapter 20, starting in verse 29. If you don't have an iPhone, iPad, Droid, Galaxy, if you didn't bring your PC, if you don't even have a paper Bible like I do, it's okay, it's on the screens. Now, as they went out of Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the road, when they heard that Jesus was passing by, they cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, Son of David. And then the multitude warned them that they should be quiet, but they cried out all the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, Son of David. And so Jesus stood still, verse 32. Jesus stood still, and he called them, and he asked, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion, and he touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. This morning, I want to talk to you about how to learn how to see from the blind man. I remember the first blind beggar I ever came in contact with. It was a few years ago. We were on the side of a volcano, actually. We were taking the gospel to a place that we were told had never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ before. And so we were actually on the side of a volcano. We invested six days. We went into village after village after village. We preached the gospel. By the end of that week, we saw over 25,000 people commit their life to Jesus Christ for the first time. We saw many people healed. We saw many people baptized in the Holy Spirit. If you've never been on a short-term missions trip, I remember I think I had 35 teenagers with me. If you've never been on a short-term missions trip, I would encourage you to do that before you graduate high school. Um, at the end of that week, we wandered into one of the villages, and I'll never forget it. He was sitting there by the road. And I mean no, no disrespect by this at all, but he kind of looked like a tree stump or a fire hydrant when he was there. He, he had no arms. He had no legs. He was literally propped up on the side of the curb, and he was begging. And I was moved with compassion, and I thought, okay, this guy has no arms, he has no legs, he's got a little bowl in front of him, he is begging, and, and I reached into my pocket to give him some money. And a friend of mine stopped me, he said, Heath, he said, don't give him any money yet. And so we actually got into a little argument on the side of the road, I said, how in the world can you tell me not to give this guy any money? He has no arms, he has no legs. And to make it even worse, he was blind. He was completely blind. His eyes were as white as the pages on my Bible. And he said, what you need to understand is not all victims of human trafficking or modern-day slavery are sold into sexual slavery. Oftentimes, people in his condition who are physically challenged, um, they, they're abducted and they're prostituted out, if you will, by pimps, or some call them Johns, to beg for money. And so we don't know if this guy is a beggar by himself or if this man is a victim of human trafficking. And what happens is, if he is a modern day slave, if you give him too much money, then his pimp will raise his quota and you make it more difficult for him in the future. If you don't give him enough money and he's being pimped out to beg for money and you don't give him enough, when he goes back home, he will be beaten. So it requires wisdom. He looked at me and he said, trust me. So as we got closer to the beggar, I was ready to give him money. I wanted to pray with him, but I was just, you know, candidly, I mean, it was a bit awkward because I thought, I just don't know what to do in this moment. I need to trust my friend. And as we got close, we heard the guy humming and singing a song in a language I did not understand, but I was very familiar with the sound. It's an old church hymn called Amazing Grace. And in that hymn, there's a line that says, I once was blind, but now I see. And my friend leaned into him and he said this, he said, if your God's grace is so amazing, then why do you sit here by the road begging and blind? And without thinking, the blind beggar look, uh, turned his head and quote, looked at my friend and he said this, sir, if you do not see how amazing God's grace is, you are much more blind than I am. My friend looked at me and he said, this guy's for real. So I reached into my pocket, I gave him what's called 100 quetzales, and my friend said, we're giving you 100 quetzales, don't let anybody tell you any, anything otherwise. On that day, I learned how to see from the blind man. 
I learned that sometimes we encounter a situation that does not line up to the goodness and the grace of God that we've heard about. And that's what I want to talk to you about briefly. Because at some point, for some of you, it will, t it will happen this morning. For some of you, it's already happened. It may happen next week. At some point in your life, you will encounter a situation that does not line up with the grace of God, the power of God, the presence of God. There are over 8,000 promises in the Bible. You will encounter a circumstance that does not line up with all 8,000 of those promises. And what do you do? What do you do when you encounter a situation that does not line up with what you know to be true about God? In this, we learn how to see from the blind man. The story I just read to you, it tells us about another blind man. Actually, the Bible tells us two blind men were sitting by the road and they too were begging. They were not on the side of a volcano like I was. Instead, they were sitting by the Jericho Road. And it's important when we read the Bible that we understand that this is not a book that your youth pastor or your senior pastor uses on Wednesdays and Sundays. singing um there's like over probably ten thousand people there um but yeah it was i i loved it um i got an awesome counter of the lord um i always need that um i always need a refresher um so yeah that was awesome um so like i said guys this is the this vlog guys like subscribe at our vlogs i'll see you guys in the next vlog guys good night